Welcome to day three of the Mar Machine flywheel prototype. And today I'm going to put together the frame. So this frame is designed like a Lego kit. I have laser cut rectangular holes. And in some parts I have laser cut pegs that goes into the holes. So everything is self aligning. I don't have to measure anything. All this should go together like a Lego kit if I design this well. On the first day, I put together all the wheels and the pulley and prepared for lathing. I had to weld the ID because I made a design error there. And then yesterday, the second day, I did turning on a metal lathe for the first time. Today I'm up before everyone else because I wanna see fast progress today. I wanna see this frame up before lunch. Let's see if I can do that. If I'm going to be done with this assembly already before lunch, I can't afford to weld the wrong tube in the wrong place. So I'm gonna spend some extra time and care to make sure that I don't do that. Part of my new form from function design aesthetics is to keep things simple. And everything in this frame is 90 degrees. And these are welding magnets that are 90 degrees. So this should make it very simple to just click the magnet there and there. This should be 90 degrees. I'm only going to do small tacking first everywhere. And when I see the frame is assembled correctly, then I weld it together solidly. So before welding this section together, I'm going to add some pivot points to this bar. These pivot points are for the pedal and it's easier to weld them on on the bench before putting the frame together because I can more easily make sure that they're 90 degrees and that the shoulder bolt goes in perfectly. And now it's done, I can put the frame together. Yes. Yes. So this tube has to fit here, here, and here. One in, all three in. Clicks in like a Lego kit. I just found my first mistake. This should be turned 180 degrees. But since I only tack weld it, I can just break the weld like this. And it's loose. And I flip it and this is the right direction. And I also forgot that this one has to go in right now. So it should be into this holes here. And now when I flipped it, it also fits into this holes here. There we go. This is tricky. I kind of need to hold this up like this and get like six fits in from this in the same time. And then I realized I can use gravity by turning the frame this way. And things will be much easier because then this one can stand up. And then I can just put this one on as a lid. So. It's stable right now and looks pretty flat. The frame is already tack welded together and this has gone together like a Lego kit so far. I'm really, really happy with my design and my tolerances on this frame so far. Before welding it shut for real, I wanna check for some accuracy. I don't need a lot of accuracy from this frame actually. First I'm checking for square and it's a little bit out of square. Yeah, so this needs to go that way a little bit. A little bit more. <laughs> it's not working that well. Ah, that's a little bit better. This corner is perfect. Ah, it's fine. 
The only accuracy that is a little bit interesting in the frame is the flatness between these three bars. And the only flat thing I have to measure the flatness is the shafts we're gonna use. So now I can place, yeah, so it's not entirely flat. And we hear this sound, it means it's not flat. And I can see here that it's pretty far from flat, but that's all fine because as long as we know that, we can use shims to make sure that everything is level when we add the bearings. I don't think there's a lot I can do here. Perhaps I can whack this down a little bit. Let's, let's try that. So I'll remove the tack welds from this middle beam and then I'm gonna give it some well-deserved love. So that was my mother. So this is Lena. Hi. She sends all the records that people order and stuff and helps me with more than what you want to know, actually. <laughs> Always there for me and helping me out with following my dreams. So thank you, mother, for being, <laughs> being awesome. Okay. <laughs> okay, this helped a little bit, but I'm actually going to take away the tack welds here as well to see if I can whack it down further. Okay, I can't get this further down, so I'm gonna try to lift this one up by removing the tech welds here and here, and then try to lift it a little bit. So I'm wedging this section from the floor. Ah, oh, I see a millimeter. <laughs> Accuracy is much better now. It's not perfect, but it's all we need. Now I'm adding a few more tack welds here and there. I'm not going to weld it completely solid yet because I want to try to add some wheels and some shafts to the frame to see that everything is in the right place before I just completely weld up everything. But I'm adding three or four tack welds everywhere so I know that the frame won't move when we add some bearings and some shafts and the prototype is really taking shape. That's the tack welding for now. Quarter to two. Not before lunch, but around lunch. Finish the frame. Very happy with this so far. I think we have earned to have some fun. Let's put some beautiful SKF bearings on this and let's put the flywheel on the frame to just see the first rotating part of the flywheel prototype, shall we? Yes. Now we're gonna come to my absolute favorite part of this whole project. Something that I wanted to show you more in depth for a long time. We have a frame, we have a flywheel. How do we put this flywheel onto the frame? Well, as you know, if you've been following earlier during the spring, I have made some controversial bearing housing designs that were not so popular to say the least. I actually reached out to SKF, which is a Swedish bearing company. I wrote them an email and said, hey, I'm trying to build a better marble machine. Would you be able to help out with design decisions? And they were like, of course, here's an application engineer. So shout out to Roger, who has been helping me. Roger gave me some design advice and all these products is actually from Roger's advice. I am following more of engineering standard principles. As you will see, this stuff is awesome. Let's begin with the bearings. So this is SYA505 pillow block bearing housing. It has an insert bearing that is replaceable and this has a trick up its sleeve. Because if I try to fit the shaft right now, you can see that it doesn't fit at all. Because this bearing is designed to work together with this awesome thing. Here we have H2305. This is a tapered cam lock system. And these three parts comes with a lot of magic built in. This part has a taper. So if I try to insert it from this direction, it doesn't go in. If I turn the bearing housing around, it goes in perfectly. So if we then switch around, we can see some threads. This is a spring. I think it goes on this way. I'm going to double check. H2305 adapter sleeve with KM lock nut and MB lock washer. So it's not a spring, it's a lock washer, you can say. And then you lock it like this. When you tighten this like this, the ID, the inner diameter, will shrink. So I can insert a shaft with a slip fit, like this. Perfect. And now it's loose. But when I start to tighten here, it is getting rigid. 
Why is this so special? Well, for example, your tolerances of your shaft is way more forgiving. You can buy a much cheaper shaft that doesn't have to be so precise, and then you can clamp down the bearing to get your perfect fit. So there you can save money on other parts. And also with sideways control, so when you want to lock down the shaft in this direction or the bearing, this is super solid. And in my previous designs, I used these uh, circlet clips with lathed grooves to hold things sideways. I don't even need to do that now. Basically, this part is smarter off the shelf, which allows me to buy a more stupider, simpler part for the shaft. So that's pretty awesome. Another benefit is concentricity. So a lot of bearing housing has a grub screw or a set screw going into the shaft from one side like this. And in theory, that is pushing the shaft off center. Uh, in practice, in my application, maybe that doesn't matter a lot, but since this taper cam is squeezing the shaft from all directions, the shaft will always stay completely centric to the bearing, which is just really nice feeling. Plus, those grub screws often hurt the shaft and make a notch, which can make it really hard to get bearings off. A small little detail like this, where someone has actually already solved the problem and done a lot of thinking, it's kind of beautiful and can help a lot to make a functioning marble machine. So I really love this solution. However, you need a special spanner wrench to tighten this. Uh, did you bring the spanner wrench I asked you to buy? Yes, I go and get it for you. Awesome. See you soon. Thank you. With nice stuff like this, I don't just want to take a wrench and kind of try to grab this. So I checked online and I found the tool that SKF are specifying for this cam lock. So it should go on like that. And I have to... Ooh, that's so nice. I checked the image again and I realized that I put this backwards. This gives you better access with a spanner wrench. For the flywheel shaft, we need three units. And look at that, Wilson actually loves the spanner wrench. So here's a centerless ground shaft with quite high straightness. I think it's straight enough for this application. This is like a perfect slip fit. I have to give it some force and then it slips perfect. So one, two, that goes on awesome. And the third one we have to wait a bit because now we have to put a flywheel on. And that was the most controversial thing how I put the flywheel on in the beginning of the design. And a lot of you said tapered bushing. And I was like looking at them online and I was like, I didn't understand how they were working. And then my application engineer at SKF said, we have a tapered bushing that will do this job really well. I started to look into it and this is just, of course, the correct way to do this. So let's look at how the flywheel goes onto the shaft with a tapered bushing. This is SKF SHT20 SH bushing. I already opened this one, that's why there's no plastic. It consists of three separate parts. So we have this threaded ring, and then we have the ID and the OD sleeves. And what's really cool is that they turned the taper into steps so that the OD can be pretty small. So it spirals in and it goes in counterclockwise. So what happens when these grub screws are pushing on this edge is that it's pushing this part on top of this part like that. So thanks to these two slots, the middle part is compressing and the outer part is expanding, which means that we get compression both on the shaft and on the outer part that we put onto the outside of the tapered bushing. Here's the flywheel that you've been seeing in the two earlier videos in this series. And the OD was too big from the laser cutting because of a stupid CAD error I did. I welded it shut so we can lathe it open, which we did in yesterday's video. We actually lathed this dimension a little bit too big yesterday, so it goes in a little bit easier than what I would have liked, but I've checked and it's within specifications for the tapered bushing, so we did the job after all. I'll put the shaft in. 
perfect slip fit there as well. And then I start to turn the grub screws. So they're just on. Now we're going to see when it starts to bite. Not yet. There. So with very little force from only two screws, the thing is already biting. This is only half the flywheel. It is pretty heavy. Okay, I might need another hand. Okay, thank you for now. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you for more help soon. Great. I have this video to edit now. Yes. <laughs> so few parts on this shaft. It's just a lump of metal with a tapered bushing and some bearing housings. And we have the whole assembly. As you probably can tell, I'm really happy about this design. I think I have grown as a designer from my previous efforts pretty far. And today showed me something else that I really wanted to see. This morning, this frame didn't exist. I put it together, it went together like a Lego kit. I did zero design errors on all these parts. They're all individual, 23 individual square tubing parts with laser cut features and they worked exactly as planned. Finally, I'm very, very happy for that. This prototype is actually testing two things. First of all, if a big flywheel can make me play tight music. But secondly, I'm trying to see if I can design something digitally that goes together the way I expect it in the real world. That is going to be increasingly more important skill for me to have if I'm going to outsource manufacturing and assembly and mainly be head designer of a project like this. So I woke up and I put this together and we can make a video in one day. I'm super happy about this and I'm really happy about this the building series. We're gonna keep it going. We're gonna add more and more fun parts to this prototype. So thank you so much for following along and see you tomorrow for day four.